A Room with a View by E.M. Forster. Dramatized in four parts by David Wade. With Sheila Hancock as Charlotte Bartlett, Stephen Moore as Mr. Beebe, John Moffat as Mr. Emerson, Gary Cady as George Emerson, Barbara Jefford as Miss Lavish, Anna Cropper as Miss Allen, David Collings as Mr. Eager, and Kathy Serra as Lucy Honeychurch. Part one, Miss Honeychurch, Giotto, and Too Much Beethoven. February 23rd. 1905. This evening, Cousin Charlotte and I arrived in Florence. Oh dear. And found ourselves in the Pensione Bertolini, where the Signora turned out to be a Cockney married to an Italian, where the dining room is hung with a portrait of the Queen and another of the Poet Laureate both of them long dead, and where there also hangs a notice for the English church, chaplain in residence, the Reverend Cuthbert Eager, M.A. Oxon. As if that were not enough, all our fellow guests are English tourists like ourselves. Florence, I felt we might as well have been in London. Our pensione was at first a little of a disappointment. Not least because we had been promised adjoining rooms with a view onto the river. Instead, we had been given rooms far apart and overlooking a most disagreeable courtyard. Tired as we were, we rather let our disappointment show at dinner. Not altogether wisely as it was to prove. The Signora had no business to do it, no business at all. Oh, Lucy. I did so want to have a view across the Arno. Oh, it is a shame. Any look does for me, naturally, but it does seem hard that you should be without a view. Cousin Charlotte, you mustn't spoil me. Of course, you must look over the river, too. The first vacant room in the front, and you must have it. No, no, you must. Shh, dear, not so loud. I insist, your mother but for whose kindness I would not be here, has entrusted you to me. She would never forgive me. On the contrary, I am the one she would never forgive. Uh, excuse me, but uh, I have a view. I have a room with a view. A view? Indeed. Yes, yes, a view. Uh, how delightful. This is my son, George. How do you do? I have a view as well. Both of us have rooms with views. Oh. I don't quite... Listen, dear. Leave this to me, please. Uh, what I mean is that you can have our rooms and we'll have yours. Eh? We'll change. Thank you very much indeed. That is, of course, out of the question. Why? Because it's out of the question. Thank you. You see, we wouldn't like to take... Lucy, please. No, but I would like to know why. I mean, women like looking at views. Men don't. George, persuade them. Well, it's so obvious they should have the rooms and there's nothing else to say. Indeed, there is not. But there is. There is a great deal to say. <sighs> Why should you not change? We have the rules. Oh, dear, oh, dear, is there going to be a scene? Such ill-bred people who argue about rooms and views. Yet every time they speak, the argument grows wider, deeper, until it isn't about rooms and views at all, but rather about... I don't know exactly. Something different. Whose existence I had never realised before. Like them, George and I will clear out in half an hour. <clears throat> Lucy, eat your dinner, dear. That old man and his son seem very odd. Just eat your dinner. This pension is a failure. Tomorrow we will make a change. Good evening, ladies. Oh, Gentlemen, I do apologise for being quite so late. I was walking in the city. And... Why, it's Mr. Beebe. Oh, how perfectly lovely. I, uh... Charlotte, we must stop here now, however bad the rooms are. Uh, Mr. Beebe, how do you do? I expect you have forgotten us. Um, I... 
I am Miss Honeychurch, and this is Miss Bartlett. How do you do? Uh, whom I was visiting at Tunbridge Wells when you helped the Vicar of St Peter's that very cold Easter. Ah, uh, Miss Honeychurch, of course. <laughs> Miss Bartlett, how could I forget? Do please join us. There's a place just here. Oh, uh, have you? Oh, I am so glad to see you. Just fancy how small a world it is. Summer Street, too, makes it so specially funny. I indeed. <laughs> Miss Honeychurch lives in the parish of Summer Street, Mr. Beebe, where I understand you have just accepted the living. Ah, quite <laughs> right. I move into the rectory at Summer Street next June. <laughs> I am most fortunate to be appointed to such a charming neighbourhood. Oh, ah, <laughs> oh, how glad I am. The name of our house is Windy Corner. Uh, very charming to him. I live there with my mother and mm. Freddy. That's my brother. Mm -hmm. Though it's not often we get him to... The church is rather far off. I mean, Lucy, dearest, let Mr. Beebe eat his dinner. Mm, I am eating it. Thank you. Mm, and enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> now, Miss Honeychurch, tell me, do you know Florence well? Oh, no, not well at all. That's to say I've never been here in my life and wouldn't be here now if Mother hadn't suggested... Then permit me to advise you. Don't neglect the countryside around. <sighs> the first fine afternoon, drive up to Fiesole and around by Settignano or something of that sort. No, no, Mr. Beebe, you're wrong. Oh. The first fine afternoon, your ladies must go to Prato. Oh, oh. No, no, not too far. Start with something nearer home. <laughs> Mr. Beebe's right. No, I'm Get to know the, the city idea. first. That's my advice to you. Beginning with the Duomo. No, not the Duomo. Everybody should begin in the Piazza della Signorina. That's the heart of the Whatever place. else you do, don't live without a tram. <laughs> if you can get on to us. You're all wrong. Each one of you... Prato is the place. They must go to Prato before anything. It is too sweetly squalid for words. I love it. I revel in shaking off the trammels of respectability, as you know. <laughs> or if we didn't, we do now. Lucy, dear, if you have finished, perhaps we should go into the drawing room. Uh, by all means. Good evening to you, Miss... And to you. Uh, Miss Honeychurch. Uh, young lady, should you change your mind about the rooms... You're very kind, but thank you. No. Extraordinary. <laughs> Quite extraordinary. Our good signora bows us out of her dining room with her bambini beside her like any natural-born Florentine until she opens her mouth. Yeah. Then, instead of Enrico Mio, <laughs> Vittoria Mia, it's my boy Henry, my <laughs> little girl Victoria. <laughs> Most depressing. <laughs> and as for this drawing room, <laughs> pure Bloomsbury. Don't you agree, Miss Honeychurch? Yes, I do. Oh, Mr. Beebe, I must tell you that we are most grateful to you. The first evening means so much. When you arrived, we were in for a peculiarly mauvaise carte. I am extremely sorry to hear that. Oh, yes. Do you by any chance know the name of the old man who sat opposite us at dinner? Emerson. Mr. Emerson. Is he a friend of yours? We are friendly, as one is in pension. Oh, then I'll say no more. Oh, please, if there's been some small difficulty, I hope I may be... Well, then, you see, Lucy and I were commiserating with each other during our dinner that both our rooms looked out onto the courtyard rather than the river, when, to our complete astonishment, Mr Emerson, without the slightest introduction, offered to exchange them for his own and his son's, which he tells us have a view... Ah, I can see you might have been upset. The point is, Mr. Beebe, that I am, as it were, my cousin's chaperone, and it would be a serious thing if I put her under an obligation to people of whom we know nothing. Mr. Emerson's manner was somewhat unfortunate. I hope I acted for the best. You acted very naturally. All the same, I don't think much harm would have come out of accepting... No, 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 no harm, of course. But we could not be under an obligation. He is rather a peculiar man. Yes. I think he would not take advantage of your acceptance, nor expect you to show gratitude. He has the merit, if it is one, of saying exactly what he means. Yes. It is so difficult... At least I find it difficult to understand people who always speak the truth. Oh, but I was hoping he was nice. I do so always hope that people will be nice. I think he is nice and tiresome. I differ from him on almost every point of any importance. As I expect, I may say, I hope, you will differ. 
Am I to conclude he is a socialist? Well, for want of a better term. And presumably he has brought up his son to be a socialist also. I hardly know, George, for he hasn't learnt to talk yet. <laughs> <laughs> but he seems a nice enough creature, and I think he has brains. Of course, he has all his father's mannerisms, and it is quite possible that, as you say, he too may be a socialist. Oh, you're most helpful. But you think I ought to have accepted their offer. You feel I have been narrow-minded and suspicious. Not at all. I never intended to suggest that. But ought I not to apologise at all events for my apparent rudeness? Certainly not. It would be quite unnecessary. Now, if you will both forgive me... Oh, oh, by all means. Good evening, Mr. B. Oh, dear. Was I a bore? Why didn't you talk, Lucy? He prefers young people, I'm sure. I hoped you would have his company for the rest of the evening. He is nice, just what I remember. He seems to see good in everyone. No one would take him for a clergyman. Lucia! Well, you know what I mean. And you know how clergymen generally laugh. Mr. Beebe laughs just like an ordinary man. You are a funny girl. How you remind me of your mother. I wonder if she would approve of Mr. Beebe. I'm sure she will. Everyone at Windy Corner will approve. Ah, oh, yes. It is the fashionable world. I am used to Tunbridge Wells, where we are hopelessly behind the times. Yes. Oh. oh, I have been selfish and unkind. I must be more careful. It is so dreadful for Charlotte being poor. <coughs> oh. Uh, oh, forgive me, please, Miss Honeychurch and Miss Bartlett, too. Uh, I did not wish to startle you, Alan. Miss Catherine Allen, I wondered if I might be allowed to join you. Oh, please do. We should be delighted. I could not help overhearing that this is your first visit to Florence and perhaps, indeed, to Italy. That is so, Miss Allen, yes. It is always such a plunge, a first visit anywhere. Oh, isn't it? But so gratifying after one has taken the plunge and it has turned out a success. <laughs> oh, that has certainly been our experience. My dear sister Teresa, you saw her no doubt at dinner. Well, the improvement in her health since you arrived in Italy is quite remarkable. Oh, one naturally learns to take all necessary precautions. At night, one closes the bedroom windows. In the morning, it is advisable thoroughly to empty the hot water bottles. And, of course, in such respects, Florence is much kinder to its visitors than Venice, where we spent a night and where I found in my bedroom something that is one worse than a flea, though mercifully one better than something else. <laughs> but here you are, as safe as in England. Signora Bertolini, so... Very English. Yet our rooms smell. We dread the thought of going to bed. Ah, uh, that is because you look into the courtyard. If only Mr. Emerson were more tactful. Oh, we were so sorry for your dinner. I think he was meaning to be kind. Of course, but he is not tactful. Mm. Yet have you ever noticed that there are people who do things which are indelicate and yet at the same time beautiful? Beautiful? Are not beauty and delicacy linked? So one would have thought. But things are so difficult, I sometimes think. Miss Bartlett, it's all right about the rooms. Oh. I'm so glad. Mr Emerson was talking about it in the smoking room and, knowing what I did, I encouraged him to make the offer again. Oh. He has let me come and ask you. He would be so pleased. Oh, Charlotte, we must take the rooms now. The old man has been so nice and kind. <sighs> I see that I have been officious. I must apologise for my interference. Oh, Mr. Beebe, please don't be offended. Dearest Lucy, my own wishes are unimportant in comparison with yours. It would be hard indeed if I stopped you doing as you liked when I am only here through your mother's kindness. If you wish me to turn these gentlemen out of their rooms, I will do so. Mr. Beebe, mm. would you kindly tell Mr. Emerson that I accept his kind offer and then conduct him to me that I may thank him personally? With the greatest pleasure. Now, remember, Lucy, I alone am implicated in this. I do not wish the acceptance to come from you. Grant me that at all events. Why, yes. Oh, look, a piano. Quite good, all things considered. I wonder if the Signora would allow me to play it. Oh, how delightful for us. Oh, I'm sure she would, dear. Ah, here's Mr. Beebe already. Uh, Mr. Emerson is engaged, but his son has come in his place. My father is in his bath, <gasps> so you cannot thank him personally, but 
Any message given by you to me will be given by me to him as soon as he comes out. Oh, indeed. Uh, th then perhaps you will inform... Uh, please give my compliments to Mr. Emerson. Uh, tell your father I will thank him when he comes out... Oh, when I next see him. Oh. I will do so, Miss Bartlett. Your rooms will be ready in half an hour. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Mr. Emerson. Poor young man, how angry he is with his father about the rooms. Uh, yes. Well, uh, if you will permit me, I have my diary to write up. Oh, oh dear. A gentleman can mean so very well, but sometimes do not seem to realise... How very true, Miss Allen. I remember once an uncle... What do gentlemen not seem to realise? I can't make it out at all. I thought this room should be mine, Lucy. Just as you like. With yours immediately beside it. Come, I'll show you. Uh, but first, I should explain. What's that? What, dear? There, above your washstand. A sheet of paper with a question mark on it. Gracious me. To think I did all my unpacking <sighs> and never even saw it. It's a very big question mark. Whatever can it mean? I have no idea. But it's exceedingly obnoxious. It must belong to Mr. Emerson. Exactly. Oh. oh, I suppose I ought to give it to him back. I shall put it in the blotter. So, now, your own room, dear. I so hope you will like it. I'm sure I'll like it very much. Um, I was about to explain why it is that I have taken the larger room... Well, naturally, of course, I should have given it to you, but I happen to know that it belongs to the young man, and I was sure your mother would not have liked that. I'm sorry, Charlotte, but I don't understand. My dear, if you are to accept a favour, it is more suitable that you should be under an obligation to the father rather than to the son. I am a woman of the world in my own small way, and I know where things lead to. However... Mr. Beebe is a guarantee of a sort that they will not presume on this obligation. Mother wouldn't mind, I'm sure. No, but... Uh, oh, oh, well. High time for bed, Butcher. Good night, dearest Lucy. Good night, Charlotte. Oh, why does it have to be like this? Why can't we just accept? Anyway... Oh, but look, Charlotte has unpacked for me as well. She is so very kind, and yet I sometimes wish... Oh, the view! Oh, the lights, all dancing on the river, the cypresses, and such a moon... Oh, kind old Mr. Emerson, who made this possible. should not lean out of the window unless fully dressed. Nor, if I may say so, leave your door unlocked at night. I am sorry. Whatever are you doing? Looking in the cupboards. One cannot be too careful. Anybody might have tried your door while you were sleeping. No, all is well. So, hurry along now, Lucy, I beg you, or the best of the day will be gone. I shall see you at the breakfast table. Charlotte, you've already finished. I'm so sorry. I was as quick as I could be, but I... Never mind, my dear. Here are rolls, and I'll pour you some coffee. 
Anyhow, I was having a most interesting conversation with Miss Lavish. Good morning to you. Good morning. Now then, I was thinking that as this is our first morning, and I am, after all, a wee bit tired, we had better spend it settling in. Unless, that is, you would prefer to go out. Well, as it is our first morning, I would rather, yes. But, of course, I can perfectly well go alone. Oh, Lucy, how can you suggest such a thing? I could not possibly allow it. I shall accompany you, of course. Certainly not. If you are tired and wish to settle in, then I shall stop with no, you. No, 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 no. That would never do. Charlotte, I can easily... I won't hear of it. We shall both... No, have... Lucia, I can just as well... If my lady propriety is troubling you, I do assure you that you can neglect that good person. Oh, Miss Lavish, I don't believe you've been properly introduced to my cousin, Miss Honeychurch. Ah, oh, Yes. How do you do? Very well, thank you. As I was saying, Lucy, dear, clever Miss Lavish was telling me so many fascinating things about it. And today. one of them, Miss Honeychurch, is that being English, you will be perfectly safe. A dear friend of mine, Contessa Baroncelli, has two daughters, and when she cannot send a maid to school with them, she lets them go alone in sailor hats. <laughs> Everyone takes them to be English, you see. Especially if their hair is strained tightly behind. Most interesting, Miss Lavish, but all the same, I really feel I but ought my to my dear Miss Bartlett, why sacrifice yourself when there is no necessity? I was intending to spend a long morning in Santa Croce, and if Lucy would come too, I should be delighted. Oh, well, if you are sure... Absolutely. I will take you by a dear, dirty back way, Miss Honeycher. Oh, not too dirty, please. <laughs> and if you bring me luck... We shall have an adventure. Oh, yes. And Santa Croce, where is that? My Baedeker will know. Tut, tut, Miss Lucy. I hope we shall soon emancipate you from that fellow. He does but touch the surface of things. As to the true Italy, he does not even dream of it. The true Italy is only to be found by patient observation. Oh, the warmth. How the spirit blossoms in the spring sun of Italy. Oh, yes, it does. And how the February wind comes down the side streets like a knife. Here is the Ponte alle Grazie. Dante mentions it, you know. Indeed. The smell. A true Florentine smell. Every city, let me tell you, has its own smell. It isn't a very nice smell. No, one doesn't come to Italy for niceness. One comes for life. Buongiorno! Buongiorno! Look at that adorable wine cart. How oh, the driver stares at us, poor simple soul. Perhaps it is my military cloak. Perhaps. Buongiorno! <laughs> Take the word of an old woman, Miss Lucy. You will never repent of a little civility to your inferiors. That is true democracy. Although I myself am a radical. There, now you're shocked. Indeed I am not. We are radicals too, out and out. My father always voted for Mr Gladstone, until he was so dreadful about Ireland. Oh, I see. And now you've gone over to the enemy. Oh, please. If my father was alive, I'm sure he would vote radical again, now that Ireland is all right. As it is, the glass over our front door was broken last election, and Freddy, that's my brother, is sure it was the Tories. But Mother says nonsense, it was a tramp. Oh, shameful. You live in a manufacturing district, I suppose? No, in the Surrey Hills, near Summer Street, about five miles from Dorking. Indeed! What a delightful area. I know it so well. It is full of the very nicest people. Do you know Sir Harry Otway? A radical, if ever there was one. Very well indeed. <laughs> now, and you have property in this um, Summer Street? Oh, hardly any. About 30 acres, just the garden and some fields. <gasps> Bless us and save us. We've lost our way. What? Lost? Lost? <gasps> My dear Miss Lucy, what are we to do? Two lone females in an unknown town. <laughs> now, this is what I call an adventure. But everyone must know where Santa Croce is. Shouldn't we ask? Oh, but that is the word of a craven. And no, you are not, not, not to look at your Baedeker. Give it to me. I shan't let you carry it. <sighs> we will simply... Drift and see where fate takes us. A 
And what square is this? Ah, there's a question. What indeed? Oh, but Miss Lavish, look. Such lovely little statues did you ever see? Heaven above, this is the Annunciata. Oh. We've missed our way by not less than a mile. Come, come. Mm. Delicious, don't you think? Mm. Hot chestnut paste. So typical, so restorative. Most delicious. If only it did not taste of hair oil and of... Ugh, I dare not think what else. And look, as if the restoration of the body were not enough, now the restoration of the spirit beckons. Santa Croce. Is it not exquisite? Quite exquisite. It's hideous. It looks as if it had been made of icing sugar. Let us enter and make obeisance to Giotto. No! Stop a minute. Let those two people go ahead of us, or I shall have to speak to them. Oh, the British are abroad. But we sat opposite them at dinner last night. They have given us their rooms. They were so very kind. Look at their figures. They walk through my Italy like a pair of cows. Oh, it's very naughty of me, but I would like to set an examination paper at Dover and turn back every tourist who fails. <laughs> what would you ask us? Us? Oh, my dear, you would not be one of my examinees. Oh, but wait... That old man across the piazza, the one with the white whiskers. I call him my local colour box. I must have a word with him. Signore! Signore! Miss Lavish? Oh. Signorina. Please, oh. please. Go away. I have no money. Please, Signorina. Go away. Nothing. Niente. <gasps> but where's Miss Lavish? She's gone. Vanished. And she's got my Baedeker. Now what shall I do? My first morning in Florence and it's ruined. Oh well, since this is Santa Croce, I might as well go into it. It is, of course, the most wonderful building. Rather like an enormous barn, but very cold. Which of the Giottos, I wonder? They have tactile values, or so it said in Baedeker. But who is to tell me which and what they are? <sighs> oh, well, none of it matters very much. For after all, here I am in Italy, in Florence, in Santa Croce, and all around me the illustrious dead. Michelangelo, Galileo, Machiavelli. Such names. Miss Honeychurch? Oh, no, the Emersons. What are you doing here? Are you doing the church? Hmm? Uh, are you through with the church? No, I came here with Miss Lavish, who was to explain everything, and just by the door she simply disappeared and never came back, so I had to come in by myself. Well, why shouldn't you? Why try, George? Why shouldn't she? But Miss Lavish has even taken away my Baedeker. No, a Baedeker? Ah, I'm glad it's that you minded. It's worth minding the loss of a Baedeker. Uh, what strange things he does say. If you've no Baedeker, Miss Honeychurch, well, you'd better join us. Oh, no. Thank you very much. I could not think of that. But, as I am here, I would like to thank you for so kindly giving us your rooms last night. My dear, I think you are repeating what you have heard older people say. You are pretending to be touchy, but you are not really. Stop being tiresome oh. and tell me instead what part of the church you want to see. To take you to it will be a real pleasure. I am not touchy, I hope. It is the Giottos I want to see, if you will kindly tell me which they are. What you want is the Peruzzi Chapel. We will show you. Mm. <laughs> Remember the facts about this church of Santa Croce. Oh, I am sorry. A guided tour. Half of England seems to have got here before us. How it was built by faith in the full fervor of medievalism before any taint of the Renaissance had appeared. Remember nothing of the sort. 
built yeah, by yeah. faith, indeed. That simply means the workmen weren't paid properly. <laughs> Observe, moreover, how Giotto in these frescoes, now unhappily ruined by restoration, is untroubled by the snares of anatomy and perspective. Yeah. Could anything be more majestic, more pathetic, beautiful, true? True. How little avails knowledge and technical cleverness against a man who truly feels... I see no truth in any of it. I mean, look at that fat man in blue. He must weigh as much as I do, and he's shooting into the sky like an air balloon. I do beg your pardon, sir. This chapel is somewhat small for two parties. Yes. Yes. We will incommode you no longer. Oh, no, don't. Yes. Do come this way, ladies. This is simply terrible. Why did I agree to go with these two awful men? Oh, Miss Allen, good morning. Good morning, Miss Honeychurch. Such an interesting guy, dear Mr. Eager. We do recommend him to you. What have you done with Miss Barton? Oh, look, come back, please. There's plenty of room here for us all. Come back. Oh. Mr. Eager. George. I do believe that fellow is the curate we once had in Brixton. Is he? I don't remember. Yes, it's Mr. Eager. Oh, I'd better speak to him and remind him who I am. Now, now why did he leave? Did we talk too loud? Oh, how vexatious. I shall go and say we are sorry. Then perhaps he will come back. And he will not come back! Oh, my father has that effect on nearly everyone. He will try to be kind. I hope we all try to be kind. Yes, because we think it improves our characters. But he is kind to people because he loves them. And they find him out and are offended or frightened. Oh, how silly of them. I think that kind of action done tactfully. Oh, tact! Now I've said the wrong thing again. There he goes, pacing up and down. Such a rugged face for such a young man. Hard. No, not hard. He walks into the shadow and it... it springs into tenderness. Oh, they won't come back. We've spoiled the pleasure of I don't know how many people. He, oh, but don't let us spoil yours, Miss Honeychurch. Uh, have you looked at those saints? Oh, yes, they are lovely. Do you know which is the tombstone that is praised by Ruskin? No, I don't, but why not see if we can find it? Hmm? George, are you coming? No, thank you. I, I prefer to stay here. Could this be the tombstone, Mr. Emerson? Maybe, I don't know. Oh, why will George persist in staying behind to look at that fresco? I saw nothing in it. Oh? I like Giotto, though I like things like the Della Robbia babies better. So you ought. A baby is worth a dozen saints. Hmm. My baby's worth the whole of paradise, and yet, as far as I can see, he lives in hell. Yes, in hell. He's unhappy. Oh, dear. How can he be unhappy when he's strong and alive? What more is one to give him? And think how he's been brought up, free from all the superstition and ignorance that lead men to hate one another in the name of God. With such an education, I thought he was bound to grow up happy. What am I supposed to say? Mr. Emerson, you're a very foolish old man and a very irreligious one. That's what I think. What are we to do with him? He comes for a holiday to Italy and behaves like... Like a child who ought to have been playing and who instead fell and hurt himself. Hmm? What did you say? Nothing, Mr. Emerson. Listen, and don't be stupid over this. I don't require you to fall in love with my boy, what? but I do think you might try and understand him. You are nearer his age, and if you let yourself go, I'm sure you are sensible. I... You might help me. Uh... He's known so few women, and you have the time. Let yourself go. You are inclined to get muddled, if I'm a judge of people. Let yourself go. Pull out those thoughts you do not understand, and spread them out in the sunlight, 
and know the meaning of them. By understanding George, you may learn to understand yourself. It'll be good for both of you. <laughs> Mr. Emerson, you see, I... I only know what's wrong with him, not why it is so. What is wrong with him? Oh, the old trouble. Things won't fit. What things? The things of the universe. It's true. They don't. Oh, Mr. Emerson, whatever do you mean? From far from eve and morning, and yon twelve-winded sky, the stuff of life to knit me blue hither, here am I. George and I both know this, but why does it distress him? We know that we come from the winds and that we shall return to them. Why should this make us unhappy? Let us rather love one another and work and rejoice. I don't believe in this world's sorrow. Oh, no, nor do I. Then make my boy think like us. Make him realize that by the side of the everlasting why, there is a yes. Transitory, if you like, but a yes. Uh, uh, I, I'm very sorry. You'll think me unfeeling, but... Your son wants employment. Has he no particular hobby? I myself have worries, but if any occur, I can generally forget them at the piano. And collecting stamps did no end of good for my brother. Perhaps Italy bores your son. You ought to try the Alps or the lakes. Stamps. Stamps. I see. Miss Honeychurch. Miss Bartlett. Oh, good gracious me. Where? In the nave. I see. Those gossiping little old Miss Allens must have... Oh. Poor girl. Poor girl. Mr. Emerson, I fail to understand the point of that remark. I think myself a very fortunate girl, I assure you. I'm thoroughly happy and having a splendid time. Pray don't waste time mourning over me. Thank you both so much for all your kindness. A delightful morning. Santa Croce is a wonderful church. Good day. see my cigarette case, have you? No, I don't think you have. Anyway, as soon as I find it, or even if I don't, your cousin and I are going to gird our loins and make an expedition. Never mind the rain. I'm sorry, Miss Lavish, what did you say? She and your cousin are going on a little expedition. Never mind the rain. Mr. Beeve, how long have you been tucked away there? Since before you started playing. And I must say, if Miss Honeychurch ever takes to living her life as she plays her piano, it will be very exciting, both for us and for her. Oh, what a funny thing. Someone said just the same to my mother, and she said she trusted I should never live a duet. <laughs> doesn't your mother like music? She doesn't mind it, but she doesn't like one to get excited over anything. She thinks I am silly about it. Once, you know, I said that I liked my own playing better than anyone's. She has never got over it. Of course, I didn't mean that I played well. I only meant... Of course. You see, music... Uh, yes? I don't know. <sighs> Poor Charlotte will be sopped. And we'll come back with a tickly cough. Mm, I fear that in the few days you have been here, Miss Lavish has led your cousin astray. Now I believe she has persuaded her that they will only find the true Italy in the rain. Miss Lavish is such an original. So everyone keeps saying. Is it true that she's writing a book? Everyone says that as well. What is it about? Apparently, it is to be a novel dealing with modern Italy. But if you want an account... Let me refer you to Miss Allen. I wish Miss Lavish would tell me herself. We started such friends. 
But I really don't think she ought to have run away with my Baedeker that morning in Santa Croce. Mm. Charlotte was most annoyed at my being left practically alone there. And the two, at all events, have evidently made it up. Fascinating, the ways of maiden ladies. I beg your pardon? Oh, nothing, nothing. <gasps> oh, look at that rain. <coughs> the Arno is rising. Poor Charlotte really will be sopped. Why, Miss Honeychurch, a window open on a day like this? You'll catch a chill. Oh, I'm so sorry. Good afternoon, Miss Allen. Oh, Mr. Bean. But who would suppose that this is Italy? There is my sister actually nursing a hot water can. Miss Honeychurch, I could hear your beautiful playing, though I was in my room with the door shut, which is indeed most necessary in this country where no one has the least idea of privacy. I quite agree with you, Miss Allen. The Italians are the most unpleasant people. They pry everywhere, they see everything, and they know what we want before we know it ourselves. We're at their mercy. Yet in their hearts they are superficial. They have no conception of the intellectual life. <laughs> oh, good gracious. What is this I'm sitting on? A cigarette case? Ah, that belongs to Lavish. A good fellow, Lavish, but I wish he'd start a pipe. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Beebe. Indeed, though it is dreadful of her to smoke, it is not quite so dreadful as you suppose. She took to it practically in despair after her life's work was carried away in a landslip. Surely that makes it more excusable. Her life's work? What was that? It was a novel, and I'm afraid, from what I can gather, not a very nice novel. Anyhow, she left it almost finished in the grotto of the Calvary at the Cappuccini Hotel in Amalfi. While she went for a little ink, and while she was gone... The grotto fell onto the beach, and the saddest thing of all is that she cannot remember a word of what she had written. Oh, the poor thing was very ill after, and so got tempted into cigarettes. I'm glad she's writing another novel, and so cheerful through it all. I cannot help thinking that there is something to admire in everyone, even if you do not approve of them. Oh, yes, indeed. All the same, she is a little too... I hardly like to say... Unwomanly, but she behaved most strangely when the Emersons arrived. Oh, really? You know the story, Mr. Beebe, I think. I do, Miss Allen, but she'll be most interested to hear how you tell it. <laughs> well, Miss Honeychurch, I don't know if you have noticed that Miss Pole, the lady who has so much rather yellow hair, always takes lemonade. Well, old Mr. Emerson, who puts things very strangely, warned Miss Pole about the dangers to her... Oh. Go on, Miss Allen. Um, excuse me. I will order us some tea. Oh, dear. How tactful of him. It should have occurred to me. This was not a story that a lady could possibly finish in the presence of a gentleman. In what way do you mean? Her S, my dear. Her stomach... Old Mr. Emerson warned Miss Pole about the dangers to her stomach. I must say I forgot myself and laughed. It was so sudden, though, as my sister said, it was no laughing matter. But the point is that Miss Lavish was so positively attracted by his mentioning this, and said she liked plain speaking, she thought the Emersons were commercial travellers, and all through dinner tried to prove that England, our great and beloved country, rests on nothing but commerce. Mm. Oh, my sister was very much annoyed and left the table before the cheese. You see what a tangle we're in by this time, and all on account of S having been mentioned. Most unfortunate. But that was not the end of it. After dinner, Miss Lavish actually came up to me and said, Miss Allen, I am going into the smoking room to talk to those two nice men. Come with me. Needless to say, I refused such an unsuitable invitation. I note that you are well on with your story, Miss Allen, so do let me finish it. Miss Lavish tried everyone without success and finally said, I shall go alone. <laughs> At the end of five minutes, she returned, rather put out, and began playing patience. Whatever had happened? Well, no one knows. No one will ever know. Miss Lavish will not tell, and Mr. Emerson does not think it worth telling. <laughs> Mr. Beebe. Old Mr. Emerson, is he nice or not nice? I do so want to know. <laughs> That's a question I suggest you settle for yourself. Oh, but it is so difficult. Miss Allen, what do you think? Is Mr. Emerson nice? Um... Come now, Miss Allen, I consider you are bound to class him as nice after that business of the violets. Violets? 
violets? He and his son both filled the Miss Allen's room with bowls of violets, so I heard. Oh, how lovely. Oh, dear, how things do get around. No, but I, I, I cannot forget how they behaved at Mr. Eager's lecture at Santa Croce. Oh, poor Miss Hunnichurch. You were there, of course. It really was too bad. No, I have quite changed. I do not like the Emersons. They are not nice. Well, I don't know. I can't help feeling that they are nice. Not that I see anything of them. Even their seats at dinner have been moved. But aren't they always waylaying you to go out with them, my dear? Only once. Charlotte didn't like the idea and said so. Quite politely, of course. Oh, most right of her. They don't understand our ways. They must find their own levels. I have the feeling that they've rather given up their attempt, if it was one, to conquer society. These days the father is very nearly as silent as the son. I wonder if it would not be good to plan a pleasant day for them before they leave an expedition somewhere. Uh, do you think Miss Bartlett would consent to accompany you, Miss Honeychurch? Oh, I hope she would. I shall put it to her. People should be left with happy memories. Mm. I believe it has stopped raining. Yes, indeed. The sun is shining after a fashion. Too late to go out. Oh, all the galleries are shut. I think I shall go out. I want to go round the town in the circular tram, on the platform by the driver. Oh, I uh, wish we could go with you. Unluckily, I have letters. If you do want to go out alone, won't you be better to go by foot? Italians, my dear. On the trams. You understand? Perhaps I may meet an Italian who can read me through and through. I can see you don't approve. Oh, well, I shall only go for a little walk, and I shall keep to the streets frequented by the tourists. I think we might permit you that, Miss Honeychurch. I shall see you at dinner. Mm. She oughtn't really to go at all, and she knows it. I put it down to too much Beethoven. What a lovely, exciting tram. But I have said I won't. Unladylike, as Charlotte is forever saying. Why are most exciting things unladylike? It's not that ladies are inferior to men. It is that they are different. Their mission in this life is to inspire others to achievement rather than to achieve themselves. Indirectly, by means of tact and naturally a spotless name, a lady can accomplish much. But if she rushes into the fray herself, she will be censured, then despised, and finally ignored. I know that's how it is, but why? Why does it go on? It's knights in armour, maidens, dragons, it's... Yes, it's medieval. Ah, oh, well, since I can't go on an electric tram, I shall go to Alanari's shop and buy some photographs. Botticelli's birth of Venus. Shall I? Such a pity about Venus. Charming otherwise. I shall take it. And what else? Giorgione? Sistine Frescoes, Fra Angelico, Giotto, Tactile Values, Della Robbia, Fat Babies, Guido Reni. I will have these, thank you. Uh, sette lire. Grazie, signorina. Grazie. Seven lire. And the birth of Venus. Have I struck a blow for liberty? Hardly. <laughs> the world is certainly full of beautiful things. If only I could come across them. But nothing ever happens to me. Here's the Piazza della Signoria. It's beautiful, I suppose. But not like it was the first time. 
How strange it is at this hour, all in shadow. Oh, but the tower in sunlight, like a golden pillar in the sky. Oh, do let something happen. No, no, no. Cinque lire. Avevi detto cinque. Oh, something is happening. Sentite un po'. Cinque, cinque, cinque lire. Sentite. Vedevi quindici, quindici lire. Ladro. Mascalzone. Oh, what have I done? Oh. Miss Honeychurch. Miss Honeychurch. What? Where? Oh. oh. Mr. Empson. Where am I? In the Uffizi Arcade. What happened? You fainted. Oh. I'm sorry. But how did I get here? Did you uh, How are you now? Uh, perfectly well. Absolutely well. Then let us go back to the Bertolini. How very kind you have been, but now I am well. I can go alone. Thank you. Oh, my photographs. Photographs? I bought some photographs at Alan Ari's. I must have dropped them in the square. Would you add to your kindness by fetching them? Um, oh, of course. <laughs> oh, uh, Miss Honeychurch, you must sit still. You aren't fit to go home alone. Y yes, I am. Thank you so very much. No, no, you aren't. Wouldn't try to sneak off if you were. But I had much rather... Then I won't fetch the photographs. I would rather be alone. Listen, there's been a quarrel over money. One man has stabbed another, and the second man is dead. I is probably dead. So stay here till you're rested. A and don't move until I come back. Oh, what have I done? going on. He only seemed to tap the other man on the chest. It made him frown and he bent toward me as if he wished to tell me something. But when he opened his mouth and blood... I, I know. I saw. After you had fainted, the murderer tried to kiss the man he had just killed and then gave himself up to the police. How odd Italians are. Mr. Beeb was saying that they know everything, but I think they are rather childish. <coughs> what was that? Uh... You threw something into the river. What did you throw in? Uh, something I didn't want. Mr. Emerson? Well? Where are my photographs? I believe it was my photographs you threw into the river. I, I didn't know what to do with them. They were covered in blood. There. I'm glad I've told you. I, I was wondering what to do with them. Uh, they've gone. It, it seemed better that they should go out to sea. Oh, I don't know. I may just mean they frightened me. For... For something tremendous has happened. And, and I must face it without getting muddled. A man has died. Ye yes, but, but not that exactly. Mr. Emerson. It has happened. And I mean to find out what it is. Mr. Emerson. I want to ask you something before we get back to the pension. I have behaved ridiculously. I was never so ashamed of myself in all my life. I cannot think what came over me. Oh, it's quite understandable. I nearly fainted myself. Well, I owe you a thousand apologies. Oh, it's quite all right. And this is the real point. You know how silly people are gossiping. Ladies... Especially, I am afraid. <sighs> you understand what I mean? Uh, I'm afraid I, I don't. I would be grateful if you would not mention it to anyone. My foolish behaviour. Your behaviour? Oh. Yes. All right, all right. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> and as to your kindness in... carrying me, would you also not... Uh, would you... Anyhow, thank you so much. How 
how quickly these accidents do happen, and then one returns to the old life. I don't. What do you mean? I don't understand. I shall probably want to live. Mr. Emerson, what do you mean? Oh, I would have thought it was quite clear. I want to live! <laughs>